I can hear the crowd. I can hear my competitors running. I can hear the track spikes. I can feel my heartbeat. And I'll never forget I'm running and I remember smiling. It was my moment in time. Kevin Young, the gold medalist. A new world record, Tom. You've held this world record for 29 years? 28 years and 11 months. <laughs> Kevin Young is a former Olympic hurdler. And up until the night before this interview, he held the world record for the 400-meter hurdles event. Carson Warhol bested him by 0 0.08 seconds during the Tokyo Olympic trials. And a few days before that, Sydney McLaughlin broke the women's world record for the 400-meter hurdles. It's an event that's over in under a minute, and Olympic athletes make it look effortless. But it's not as simple as running and jumping. It's actually one of the most demanding races on the track. So you got to deal with the endurance factor and the end speed factor. It's a quarter mile, so it's a fast race. The cross between sprinting and hurdling puts these athletes in a unique position. They need to train to run at the speed of a race half the length and build the endurance needed for a race at least twice the length. Around the track are 10 hurdles, evenly spaced 35 meters apart. To get over them, hurdlers have to make the most of the three energy systems in the human body. Typically, for the first two hurdles off the blocks, the goal is to fire up to race speed. The first 8 to 12 seconds of a race, athletes tap into energy reserves in their muscles, which is fine for short, explosive races like the 100-meter dash. During Warholm's race, you can hear the announcer say, He reacted to that gun like a 100-meter sprinter. But after about 10 seconds, that energy system is spent. And there's still at least another 300 meters and plenty of hurdles to go. For the next three to five hurdles, athletes have to focus on maintaining their speed using the two other energy systems. One needs oxygen to help them with endurance as they move through the race. The other produces energy fast, without oxygen, but leads to that familiar muscle burn. If they move too fast, they'll burn out and have trouble clearing hurdles later on. By hurdles six through eight, they're coming around that final bend, and they need to give it their all to not lose speed. This is where you see Kevin Young surge ahead in the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. And Kevin Young has the lead. I got to the eighth hurdle. I literally took off away from the field. My stride was open, I was moving, and I just pulled away from everybody. At this point, legs start to feel heavier, and those hurdles start to look higher. When talking about hurdles nine and 10, one track coach I spoke with said, it's sheer willpower. From that last hurdle, there's still another 40 meters to the finish line to sprint. But mastering endurance and speed means nothing if you're not clearing the hurdles efficiently. And this is what really sets the 400 meter hurdles apart. The race isn't just physically taxing, it's highly technical. It's all about being on the track, running. That's where you get your speed from. The hurdles do to slow you down. Hurdlers don't jump, per se. They sort of sprint right over the hurdles. The goal is to spend as little time in the air as possible. The first leg over the hurdle, called the lead leg, should already be pushing down to the ground as the trail leg follows over the hurdle. Once they hit the ground, they're focused on the next hurdle. You have to establish a particular rhythm in the race. When athletes like Young talk about rhythm, they're talking about how many steps they take between each hurdle. I remember when I started running the hurdles, I would run up on the hurdle trying to go 13 steps between the hurdles because the master Edward Moses did it. And I would always chop steps. Which is why stride patterns are carefully calculated and practiced long before the starting gun. Like in Young's 1992 world record-breaking race. Stick with your stride pattern. The stride pattern was 20 to the first, 13 to two, 13 to three, 12, 12, 12 for four, hurdles four and five, then back to 13 for hurdles six through 10, and 18 steps from the 10th hurdle to the finish line. Rhythm matters for two reasons. One, so you don't stutter coming up to a hurdle or clip it like Young did on the 10th hurdle of his 1992 race. And two, so you can control which leg is the lead leg. So if you're going 13 steps, you're on one consistent leg, your dominant leg. If you're going 14 steps, you're going left, right, left, right, left, right. Top athletes can lead with either leg, but it's not uncommon for them to have a favorite. If you have a leg that you don't, you're not used to hurling with, you may take it, and it'll twist you all up and have you off balance, and you just be hoping and praying that you'd land on the other side of the hurdle. Finding and perfecting the right pattern is what drives the best athletes forward. But it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Just as Kevin Young couldn't break the world record following the techniques of Edwin Moses, Carson Warholm couldn't use Kevin Young's methods. He went out harder than I would ever run. He went 13 to 9 in the 10th hurdle. 
he went 15 and he just went over it and it was just speed. Speed at the end of a well-practiced, well-executed plan. I know how, how, how well I ran and my success in the sport itself. Um, I said, these guys are gonna take it to a whole nother level. 